Hey, what's going on guys? Chad here with Flatline Fiberco, and today I just want to give you a brief overview of my SPR setup that is new to me. I'm getting into shooting uh, long range a little bit more, trying to train up and get better and make myself, uh, well not make myself, but learn how to become a more well-rounded shooter. Um, so this is the rifle that I'm kind of starting with in my uh, long range shooting game. Um, so this rifle, was assembled by the guys at Stockpile Defense in Boise, Idaho. If you don't know who they are, they're uh, a gun shop in Boise, like I just said, and they are a good group of individuals that know what they're doing. They carry all these super awesome parts in the shop, just about all of these things. Um, so check them out. Uh, again, Stockpile Defense in Boise, Idaho. Great group of guys, they do good work there. Um, so kind of starting at the front here, we have a KGM R556 can um, that is like a, a flow through style suppressor, um, similar to like a Hux Works or something like that, or an OSS can. Um, I'm sure the internals are completely different than those, but the concept is the same to have uh, a flow through suppressor so you don't have a ton of excess back pressure on your bolt carrier and your system. Um, so it's your your gun's going to run really really well with a flow through style suppressor. Um, so this has ports all the way around the end of the suppressor, and that's going to port out all those gases out the front. Um, so it's a it's a really good sounding suppressor as well. Uh, my gun runs really well on it. It has like a ratcheting style system here, um, but it is like a tapered style. Um, muzzle device on here and then it has the ratcheting on the end of it here to kind of lock it in real nice and tight. Um, going back we have a cloud defense uh, rain 2.0 and I'm a real big fan, uh, fan of cloud and the stuff they put out. Good solid light. I really like the uh, the switching here. It's a it's good robust design. Some cable management stuff going on here uh, with the switch so super cool. Um, 100 Concepts um, light cover here. Uh, it's a super simple, unique design. I think it's really cool, 3D printed cap, and it comes with some shock cord on here and a ranger band to kind of keep everything uh, nice and tight and keep this cap where you want it. So you can just flip it out of the way, use your white light, but if you don't want to have somebody seeing that reflection back from the light, um, then that's a really cool thing or have a uh, ND or light. So super cool. Uh, I like it. Very simple. This light is mounted on an air socket light mount uh, on this side here. Um, this is a, uh, a Zev uh, wedge lock uh, handguard. Uh, super nice design. It is pretty much the same thing as what you're going to see on some of the Sons of Liberty rifles. Uh, mega rifles, that kind of stuff. Hodge, very similar as far as the lock up here. Um, rail scales, of course, I put these on all of my rifles. I just kind of like to have, it gives me a, a reference point, but also um, if I'm shooting this with my uh, hand up here, it uh, gives me a little pr uh, protection from the heat of the barrel. Um, speaking of the barrel, this is a 13.7, I believe, uh, or 13, yeah, 13.7, 13.9 inch Criterion barrel. So a very high quality barrel. Uh, they have a good reputation and so far this has been a very accurate barrel for me. Um, moving down below, we have a uh, the Arasaka rail slider system. So this is a chunk of Picatinny that they sell that is uh, M-Lock compatible. You can bolt it to the bottom of your M-Lock hand guard or rail and <clears throat> then it allows you to use their rail slider adapter here to attach your rifle to a tripod or bipod or whatever and it's kind of a universal thing that you can use it for uh, your range finders or your binos or your spotting scope um, but you can also use this for a bipod like I have here. Um, so this is a pretty cool system. It's got a little button here. Uh, there's a knob on this side over here. I'll kind of show that to you like this. So there's a knob right here and you can just back this off one turn 
and then push the button on the other side and then this will slide forward or aft wherever you want. Find a Picatinny slot and then give this a good turn and lock it down. Um, so it's really cool uh, system that they have going on and I really like it. Super simple, uh, quality, quality piece of product. Um, uh, with that said, this is a Harris bipod. Uh, it's got the uh, swivel on it and the legs shoot out and adjust pretty easily on this. Um, I really like it. Um, I'm probably going to give an Atlas a try as well. So all of this stuff might not live on this rifle forever. Uh, it's a learning thing for me. So this is what I had. So this is what went on here. Um, moving back. This is a Leupold Mark V uh, HD 2 to 10. Um, this just came out not too long ago, so I don't have a whole lot of time behind it, but I can tell it's a super, super high quality piece of glass and a very robust optic. Um, some, and this is the illuminated version. So you have illumination here. Um, it's kind of one of those things you, you might not need it uh, very often, but in those lower light conditions that you might need a little bit extra. Um, so that's pretty cool that it has that. Um, something that I'm getting into is learning more about scopes. And this has a <clears throat> parallax adjustment. So not all scopes are gonna have a parallax adjustment. Uh, and it's kind of unique for a, a two to 10 or something of this size to have a parallax adjustment. Um, so that's really cool. Parallax is, having that adjustment is very important, uh, come to find out. Um, that I, I didn't know how important it was, but uh, getting some training in with uh, Mike at Precor and Fred at Counting Coup Tactical, um, them, those guys really break it down and explain how important it is to have that parallax adjustment. So you're going to find those on your Mark Fives and you're going to find them on Night Forces and of course some of the higher end optics and the larger optics you're going to find uh, that parallax adjustment. So it's super cool. Um, on the top here, elevation adjustment is really nice and crisp. Uh, so if I'm going to dial for elevation, it's very nice. When, when you're finished, uh, I'm going to go back to zero and it has a little detent here and it's going to lock your, my turret back to zero. So super cool. Everything's very, very smooth as it should be on a high quality optic like this. Um, but I really like it. Um, going to the mount, this is a Badger C1 mount. Um, this is my first experience with Badger Ordnance uh, products, and I couldn't ask for anything more. It's, it's a very, very high quality mount, and uh, it, they have all kinds of little adapters that you can put on here. Um, like I have over here, a little bubble level. It's actually at bead level um, mounted to the side of it to make sure that my rifle is level when I'm shooting, which is <clears throat> very important when shooting far. Right, um, so that's super nice, very high quality, like everything else. And then up here, I have their adapter mount. Um, so I have a the adapter plate from uh, I think it's the company's called Coing Co. Uh, sorry if I butchered that name. Don't really know how to pronounce it just yet, but it's K O E N G um, is the company. They make this adapter plate for several different optics to be adapted to the Badger mounts. Um, this one happens to be for the 509T, Hollow Sun 509T, which uh, is an enclosed emitter optic um, that I like to mount it at the 12 o'clock position. I found that's the most natural position to put that uh, red, red dot. Uh, and it's kind of nice to be able to look around and find your target up here. And then once you find it and line it up with this optic, you can dive down into your scope and it's easy to get on target like that. So come away from this optic, look here, find your target, dive back down in here, you know, get your, um, <clears throat> get your zoom here, uh, your scope set and get your parallax set and then you're, you're ready to rock and roll. So it's pretty nice. Uh, but this mount's set up and then they have the spacer adapter to bring it up to cover these, to get above this turret here. Um, so, I'm really digging this setup. This probably will not change uh, anytime soon. Um, working back, this is a Voltor upper receiver. 
and a Stockpile Defense branded PWS uh, receiver, which is a uh, ambidextrous receiver. I'm right-handed, but uh, you know it does come in handy sometimes um, for control designs, safety selector, and controls up here uh, for your bolt release, and then on the other side, the magazine uh, release and catch is for controls as well. Uh, they make great products. I really like for control designs and the stuff that they put out. Um, Geisley. Uh, super dynamic combat trigger. So it's a two stage flat face trigger. This might get swapped out to an SSA um, two stage curve trigger. Um, we'll see. I'm going to continue to work with this flat face trigger. Um, that's what I like to put on all my carbines, but on this rifle, I might swap to the curve trigger so I can find a good reference point on my finger um, and be consistent every time, as best I can anyway. Um, I have a B5 grip here. I really like being consistent across most of my AR platform rifles. B5 grips, it has that nice, uh, pretty dang vertical uh, grip for you, and I really like them. Um, so, I mean, four controls in plate. I don't really put my uh, QD swivels here, but it's nice to have it. Um, uh, Voltor A5 buffer system in this. Um, so I have found on pretty much any of my rifles, carbines, whatever, I'm going to put the A5 system in there and uh, get that tuned up and get that thing running nice and smooth for me. And this rifle shoots super soft with this system, very controllable. Um, Magpul uh, CTR stock uh, back here. Um, I'm kind of new to these stocks too. They've been around for a really long time but I was running B5 before. Um, but learning more about shooting, uh, you know, long range, you're, you really, at me anyway, I really don't want a big, chunky, beefy stock back here um, that's gonna push my face further away from the center line of the scope. Uh, so this is nice and slim, so I can put my cheek right here, and I'm gonna be pretty in line and that's gonna keep me from having to mount the rifle and then tilt my head like that, which feels funny. Then you got some weird stuff going on with that. This gives me a more upright position behind the rifle. And I found that to be true and also important uh, with my shorter guns as well. Red dot mounted guns. Um, so going back a little bit further here is the uh, Arisaka stock adapter plate on here. Um, it, it, it probably has a certain name to it, so um, my apologies for that, but it is a really cool adapter plate that's gonna bring the angle of this stock uh, to sh a straight angle versus uh, kind of cut into the curvature of your shoulder. So it's gonna give you a, a flat purchase here, and then you can actually adjust these plates and bring this up and can it left or right as well. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of time on this yet. So eventually, once I get more time behind it, I will adjust this plate accordingly uh, for what's, what's gonna benefit me so I can get straight behind this gun as possible. Um, it also has the bag rider adapter down here, which is super nice. So if you're using a rear bag, it gives a, a nice big purchase to rest onto that bag, um, which is, it's just super nice to have. Um, and then of course here is one of our uh, custom slings and RELV camo. Uh, this is the RELV, uh, I can't remember the name of it to be honest with you. Um, Ridgeback, something like that uh, design. Super cool camo design. Uh, we're gonna be dropping a limited run of these here soon. So uh, be sure to sign up for our newsletter and all that stuff so you can get notifications when we do limited run slings like this. Uh, but it's a really nice pattern uh, sling. So this is kind of the, the basic gist of what's going on with this rifle. Um, it also has, a, I forgot to mention the bolt carrier group that's in here is a Centurion bolt carrier group. So kind of a mixture of different parts, but that's okay as long as everything is checked and it, everything is within tolerance. Uh, 
to make sure that they play together. Uh, Raptor, uh, uh, Radian Raptor charging handle on here as well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, these guys kind of know what they're doing, so they know what works, what parts and pieces go together. Those guys over at Stockpile Defense, so this is a custom build for me. Um, I'm really liking it. I might end up changing out this barrel to a 16 inch barrel to uh, do some uh, checks and velocities and stuff and see if I can uh, maybe squeeze out a little bit more velocity on this barrel uh, and put a longer barrel. We'll see. I'm gonna check velocity on this barrel and then swap it to a 16 and then check that and see see what we get, see how, how different it is. But So guys, this is kind of my intro to long range shooting SPR gun here. Um, so stay tuned. We might have some more, uh, more stuff coming for you, more rifle videos, more shooting videos in this realm of shooting. So if you have any questions, guys, drop it down below in the comment section, you know, shoot us an email, shoot me a DM on Instagram, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, appreciate your support guys and have a good one.